okay, it is week. I'm gonna have to look it up. <laughs> Let's see here. We are in June 20th. Week eight, I'm in week eight. So there's, I guess there's like a month left. Oh my gosh, I'm so stressed. <laughs> Um, so over the weekend, my buddy, Chris came in, we've been friends since I was like 10 and we were both only children. So we kind of became like brother and sister to each other, which is really nice. And we went, we went and saw the Whitney Biennial. It was a lot. I feel like you need to see that show like five times, maybe even more to be able to soak it all in. Like it was just so much. It was like going to Basel or something. Um, interesting things. I found myself really interested in like some of the install choices. Um, and of course, you know, it was like the whole show was kind of like, it started in 2019. They started curating it in 2019, but then obviously like everything changed. And so a lot of the show was kind of like a reaction to 2020 and 2021. And, um, so there was, you know, it was intense. The first the first floor we went on was like this labyrinth floor and you really did kind of get lost in it. And the walls were painted this like dark gray, black color and um, created a heaviness to, to the whole, to all the content. And the content was all heavy. It was all, a, you know, a variety of things, COVID related, um, Black Lives Matter related, important content. Um, but it felt like you were definitely carrying a weight on that floor. And then the next floor, was like super bright and white with like big open windows. So it was this really weird contrast of like the heavy floor and the light floor. Um, but yeah, so that was interesting. So Chris and I went to do that and we also got a photo booth picture taken at the Whitney cause I'm obsessed with photo booth pictures and gosh, we did so much. We got German food for breakfast and then I think we got Hungarian food for dinner. We randomly went to the Harry Potter store, which was, insanely crowded like stressful crowded but it was kind of cool because there was like some movie props in there so we went we were like planned to go to the Whitney Biennial it took oh we went to Stonewall Inn and um you know sat there for a little bit we were gonna get drinks but they had like a multiple drink minimum and we were worried we were gonna get drunk in the middle of the day um but that was cool because I'm not sure if I'm gonna go to Pride this weekend because it sounds like it's gonna be really crowded because it's like the first real Pride like out of COVID and um you know there's been a surge and I kind of get stressed in crowds of people. I don't know if I can find like, I hope I can find like, I'd love to find like a tall vantage point where I can see the beautiful like costumes and parades and stuff, but not be like in that crowd. Cause that's what makes me nervous. So I don't know. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do pride, but we kind of like made our, um, you know, we went, we went to celebrate pride a week early at Stonewall and, and that was cool. And then we went to the Harry Potter store just because we were kind of killing time because we were planning to get Hungarian food for dinner and we didn't ex we got out of the Whitney sooner than we expected and we were kind of you know and then we like went to this Lego store and then we decided to go to the Met and um, you know we just kind of walked around a little bit and we sat on the roof for a while of the Met because it's such a beautiful view it was like weirdly chilly and windy I mean so windy that I felt like I was in the Wizard of Oz um, so it was kind of intense <laughs> but you know, it's like June and I was like, I wish I had a jacket. Um, but honestly, like when you're with your childhood friends, it's so interesting. It's like, you can just like be yourself and you can like totally let your guard down and just like be silly. And so there was just a niceness, like honestly, oh, we also walked to this pier that Chris wanted to walk to that had some history related to the Stonewall. And I think, um, and that was really beautiful. But like literally I could just sit on a bench and do nothing with my childhood friends because it's just so nice to like catch up and shoot the breeze and just be around them. Cause most of my childhood friends, like one of them lives in New Orleans. One of them lives in Atlanta. Um, one of them lives, this one lives in DC. So I just don't get to see them very often. And my friend from Atlanta is actually going to come in July. So like what a treat to get to see these people that I only get to see like every once a year or every other year or whatever. So, um, so yeah, then we got Hungarian food and I got like a stuffed cabbage and Chris got this chicken thing that I can't remember the name of it. And it was like chicken and then it had the letter P. Um, and then we, <laughs> cause we literally, it felt like we walked from like one side of Manhattan to the other, which is cool. Cause you see a lot of stuff, but you're also just like, falling asleep so we're both old we're in our late 30s and we were like it was like 
eight or eight was probably like eight thirty or something, and I still had an hour trip back to Brooklyn, and so we were just like, okay, we're going to bed. Um, and he like his feet were bothering him. I think his shoes were a little weird or something. So then the next day we got, I think it was Bulgarian food for breakfast. And I got this like lamb stew in a cauldron, and he got this like cheese bread boat with an egg on top. It was interesting. Weird soda. We got a weird soda. And then we walked over to Brighton Beach, which I'd been to Coney Island many times, but Bright there was a calmness to Brighton Beach. Like Coney Island's just like hectic and there's a lot of sound and a lot of people and Brighton Beach was just like super chill. So that was nice. And then we walked down the boardwalk down to Coney, but the boardwalk felt unsafe. Like I felt like I was gonna fall through many times. Like I tripped over these boards and stuff. I was like, this is scary. And then at the Coney Island, we rode the Wonder Wheel, which was like, because the last time I went to Coney with my mom, nothing was open. It was still the beginning of the season. And um, so we rode the Wonder Wheel. That was really fun and cool. And we, we, we were going to try to catch the Mermaid Parade, but we realized that it was the day before. But instead, we went to where the people that host the Mermaid Parade is this like freak show bar. And I love circuses. It's my jam. So I made Chris go to the freak show bar um freak show performance at this bar and it was crazy they were like sticking swords down their throats and um, breathing fire and for like a little show it was good like it was good it actually may be one of my favorite things I've done so far <laughs> um because I'm just a weirdo and I got these let's see if I can get them so when I lived here when I was in my um when I was 18 I lived here for a summer I did a workshop at Pratt I got these sunglasses. I couldn't even remember where I got them, but they were like purple and they had the silver outer rim and I was obsessed with them and I wore them everywhere. And in hindsight, I kind of think I might've got them at Coney from like a street vendor because I spent a lot of time at Coney then too. It's just always been like the place I love the most in New York City. But so Chris and I were walking around and I found these glasses, they're different, but they're very close. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's like 20 years again 20 years ago glasses again because I, I ended up breaking those because I break all my glasses but I'm like obsessed with them um so that was fun I got a t-shirt a freak show t-shirt I got a poster signed by the cast because I just loved this show it was so good uh, if you're in New York City go see the freak show um and then what we and then we went back to my apartment and got some stuff because my apartment's really close to Coney Island and then we went to go get Indonesian food because Chris and I used to get Indonesian food in undergrad all the time at this place called Gaja Wong in Cincinnati. And it was my favorite restaurant ever. And I was depressed when it closed and I've never found food like it. So good. Um, so we found this one Indonesian place in Brooklyn. There was two. There was one in Queens, one in Brooklyn, obviously, because I was in Brooklyn. We were going to go to the Brooklyn one. Um, but it was like straight up it was like three blocks straight up a hill and again like we were just tired we'd done like so much walking in the past two days so we were kind of like uh but um it was really good food chris does not remember eating at gaja wong with me even though we did it like all the time <laughs> he's so funny um so yeah we had fun we ordered a bunch of food it was so good um i was so full going back and then we went to my studio and we worked on sewing some things for his son um that just needed some amending mending and I'm going to keep doing that. He took one home with him to try it on, and I'm going to keep tweaking it once he tells me if it fits. Um, and then we tried to go walk to a park that I heard about that's by my studio where you can see the Statue of Liberty at sunset, but we did not find it. We found some shady, weird fence. We did see the Statue of Liberty like through a tree at sunset, but it was not a beautiful park. It was like a kind of a weird part of town. <laughs> Um, and then it was sad to say goodbye to my good friend that I don't get to see as much as I would like, but it, the weekend was such a treat. Um, so it was packed. I feel like I did a week's worth of stuff over the weekend. Um, so then this morning I met with Ben, um, who I've been doing the flag collaboration with because we're trying to make some choices about our final show in July that we're going to do at Governor's Island that Anissa and I are going to do and Ben and I are going to show our project within that show with Anissa and I and um, I felt like I was a little bit all over the place I feel like I normally give myself space to process work and so like normally if I was at home because we had this big open studio show then I would give myself time to like process and think about it before moving on to the next thing so I would like do something with future Lindsay or do something with super tall or I would like switch projects for a little bit but so 
I feel like I haven't processed what I did last time and now I'm trying to push it forward and I'm feeling like really in my head on it. But I would tell my students, whatever it is at this moment is what it needs to be and I should follow that. So we kind of concluded with, we're just gonna make the individual flags that we're interested in and then we'll decide what makes the cut. The only problem is I have to send a proposal to Governor's Island to get it approved because we wanna like hang it in the tree. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that tonight and tomorrow morning. And then I'm hoping to get some studio time in this week because my cousin Brittany is coming this weekend and then my husband is coming a week from today. I just really miss, I mean, you know, when you spend all day, every day with somebody, like my husband's my buddy and I just miss him all the time. And my cousin Brittany is gonna come Friday and, um, and I'm sure we're gonna do all kinds of other fun stuff. And then, so yeah, I'm really lucky because it's like Chris and then Brittany and then Clint, just like so many people that are like amazing, um, back to back. Um, but I'm hoping to get studio time in this week so I can like, cause honestly it was so nice to like, cause I knew I was gonna have to make some decisions about what to make. Cause I, I get so much anxiety in that phase. Like, I'm trying to think of how to explain this. Like, once I know what I'm gonna do, then it's just fabrication. But like zeroing in on the decisions when you've got like 50 options are really, it's really hard for me. It causes like so much anxiety. So I was like really anxious all last week cause I just wasn't, I didn't have my focus and I wasn't sure and like locked on on what I was gonna do. So the meeting with Ben was like super helpful this morning even though I got up at six to like get ready for it and I still have, still behind on it. But um, like I feel like I have some focal points and I think we're just gonna focus on the individual flags that we're excited about and then we'll kind of figure out how it all comes together as like a conversation and like where there's gonna be performance and things like that. So, so I have a meeting today, I have another meeting Wednesday, and then um, I think there's like an exhibition or something for RU on Governor's Island or something. I wasn't quite, I only kind of skimmed it, my schedule for the week. And then, so I might see if Brittany wants to come to Governor's Island. Um, she's coming with her good friend and so maybe we'll all do, I mean, you know, I'm sure Brittany and I will divide and conquer, like we'll do as much fun stuff together as we can, but I want her to have like an amazing weekend. So she might go do other stuff too, but I had a really fun night Friday. Well, I had a real, okay, this was crazy. Friday, I had a meeting, I had an RU curator meeting, went really well. She asked so many like engaging, good questions. And like I said, I was feeling really lost. So I needed somebody to like dig in and she dug in and it was great. And then I was supposed to meet with Anissa to talk about our thing on Governor's Island but we had like an Airbnb crisis because our air conditioner shut down. And so Clint and I were dividing and conquering and Clint was um, calling AC repair people and I was calling Airbnb and contacting the guests because we had guests and there was a heat wave in Cincinnati and we didn't want them to have to stay in the heat wave. Although one guest did, it was cool. Um, so that was like a crazy day and I was just feeling kind of like exhausted, but I wanted to stay and work. And so I just like, put on a silly chick flick um, in my studio. Like I have a projector there and I put it on the wall and I put it in my earbuds. And I was just like doing some busy work, like cutting out some shapes and stuff that I needed to do. And I ended up having a blast. I stayed there till like 11, just like watching the silly chick flick and like working in the studio. And I mean, I'm notoriously bad at bringing enough food to eat. So sometimes I leave and I'm just like crazy hungry and making weird choices because I'm crazy hungry. Um, by weird choices, I mean like walking into walls and stuff, but. So yeah, I think, I think I've caught, caught up. I've been bad about, like, I feel like at first I was like recording these all the time. And now I'm like, oh gosh, I need to record. And, Cause I'm doing this, I'm mostly doing this to like, I just want to have, I remember being in grad school and it just being so impactful. And I didn't do a good enough job of like really documenting the breakthroughs. And I want to have this for my records and I, I don't even know if I'm going to like post this stuff. I might, I, I think I might, but cause some of it's like, some of it, it's kind of personal. So I don't know. I might, but I'm, I've been exploring documenting this whole experience from a variety of different angles. And cause you can't, you can't make the documentation exist post. So I'm just like doing it and I'll figure out what it is later and what I use and what I stick with.
So I'm literally going to record this again while I'm walking because I have had no time to like sit and record something. I'm on my way to the studio. Um, it's been a crazy few weeks, but in like a good way. My cousin Brittany, excuse me, my cousin Brittany and her friend Americo came for a weekend and that was really fun. We did like so many things all over the city and we had good meals and I got a little sunburnt. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a blast. Um, you know, Brittany's like my sister. We grew up together. We were both only children. And um, so she just kind of feels like home. Um, my glasses keep slipping off because I'm so sweaty and I forgot to wear deodorant. Um, and then literally the day after Brittany left, well, no, I should back up. The day I went to meet Brittany at the airport, I don't know what happened, but I was on the bus. I had my keys and I was like watching the GPS to make sure I got off at the right stop. And this woman behind me was like, watching my GPS um, I think to just like help me and be polite but so I was I was the bus stopped and I was thinking about it I was like is this my stop and I was like thinking about getting off and the woman starts yelling at me and she's like this is your stop you need to get off right now and I was like Ugh. so I like jumped and ran off the bus because it had already been sitting there for a minute long story short well so okay let me keep going <laughs> so um, I went I jumped off the bus the bus pulled away and then I went to the bathroom and then I went to go get cash out of the ATM to pay for the bus home. And I realized I didn't have my wallet and keys because they're like one unit for me. And so I'm pretty sure I left them on the bus. Like when I jumped off the bus, like I left them there. But I guess I could have left them in the bathroom too. I'm not sure. It was all kind of a blur. Long story short, my keys and my wallet, they were gone. But this is kind of like a rite of passage for me because or that's not the right word. It, it's a thing I do. Um, so like when I lived in Japan, I lost my wallet in a rice paddy and a man had to come and like months later, he used the address on my foreigner card to bring it to me and everything and it was like soaking wet. And then when I lived in Chicago, like the first week I was there, I lost all my keys and maybe wallet, I don't even remember. I do remember my mom had to express mail me my car key because it was like parked in a tow zone and I had lost my keys. Ugh. So this is a thing I do. I was like feeling proud of myself too that I hadn't done it yet and then I did it. But because this is not my first rodeo and Brittany was so nice about it. Thank God Brittany was there. She helped me get home and she was really patient with me. But um, yeah, I felt like a dummy. I just kept reminding myself that I'm human and this was a very human thing to do. But so I very quickly, you know, the first thing you do is cancel your cards, make sure nobody steals your monies. And then the next thing you do is uh, file a police report. My stickers, I'm literally so sweaty. I don't know what happened to it. Okay, well, I'm so sweaty, I just lost a sticker. It's it's really crazy here it's like one day it'll be like nice and breezy and the next day you're dying because it's so hot and you're melting oh i found my sticker hopefully it stays we will see so that was a whole thing and i'm still trying to get a few cards replaced it turns out there are no fifth third banks in new york city because i was going to get some temp cards but it's not an option so luckily my husband came that monday and he brought me some cards I could use and uh, Brittany's friend gave me a whole bunch of cash and I Venmoed him cash because thankfully Venmo uses your routing number not your credit card credit card so I feel like when those things happen because I just know it's a reality of me that I'm often just like juggling way too many tasks and then I let you know just weird stuff happen so I think it's just like how do you recover well and to me it was like let's just figure out you know I got this like temporary license from the DMV I'm still hoping my somebody will turn my license in Hi. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Okay, I had to stop in a store and get some stuff. Um, so, Clint came right after Brittany. And, you know, I just really missed... Like, Clint and I are a well-oiled machine. And we really balance each other well. And it's just such a joy. It, I, I, it's hard to explain, but I was just really at peace while he was here. And... Uh, we did a lot of fun things. We did the Staten Island Ferry. We walked across the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, we went to some comic book stores. We were just ourselves, you know, like we, 
worked in the studio and binged Umbrella Academy. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I could do... I'm a mess today. I could do nothing with Clint and it would be a joy. Like, we just... We don't need much to have a blast. Um, but it went by so fast. I feel like I blinked. I feel like I waited all summer for him to get here and then I blinked and he was gone. Um, I had some good meetings last week too. And uh, one of them, just I love pep talks and it felt like a really powerful pep talk. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just definitely hit me today that this is the 1st of July and I only have one month left. So really triaging the stuff that I want to do with the stuff I want to get done and preparing to exit well. So yeah, I had a great conversation with my roommate earlier today, just in the kitchen. We were kind of brainstorming and talking about a million things. So, Whew, okay. I got off the train and I'm walking to my studio. Um, so anyways, what I was saying is now I'm starting to just you know, figure out, because I think going home is going to be, you know, I'm going to have to pack up my apartment, pack up my studio. Uh, Anissa and I are having a big show in on Governor's Island for the residency. And that's going to be a lot. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be about, and then I'm really lucky. My friend Grace is coming this weekend. She lives in Boston, so it's just a kind of a quick train ride. And, uh, I think we're going to hit a bunch of fabric stores and stuff this weekend, but, um, yeah, it'll just be like, we, I don't think we've seen each other since before COVID. So it'll be like such a treat to catch up. We bounce off of each other really well. Like we love to ideate together and dream about crazy stuff together. And yeah, um, we're two peas in a pod. So that'll be super fun. And then in July 14th, my friend Mandy's coming. I think we're going to try to take a dance class together and uh, and then my ideally hopefully my whole family's coming to see the governor's island thing and then my friend Jamie is coming on um, like the very last few days and she's going to drive back with me and I think we're going to try to stop in Philadelphia and see the Duchamp stuff there and maybe get lunch with my friend from DC so so that's kind of, so I have a feeling on one hand, it feels really far away because I, I just, I feel like a lot of what this experience has done for me is make me aware of just how grateful I am for the life that I have. And I can't wait to like go home and appreciate it. But it's also given me a, a way to kind of step back and just look at my myself and how I make choices and how I have a routine in the studio. And um, I'm really hoping that I'll have a focused clarity to, to work hard. Oh, I forgot to mention I had a business consulting meeting with a, with a friend from back home who's super inspiring. And I feel like I, I feel more resolved about, I really want to start a side hustle since teaching is not <laughs> a lucrative way to live, but I love it so much and I want to keep teaching. So I think I just need to find a way to bring in more income on the side um, to, to, to cover our basic you know, to, to live. <laughs> um, I feel, yeah, I feel more hopeful about that than I have in a long time. So yeah, my mind's going a million miles a minute. I've barely had any time to document. I've been like running around like crazy, having meetings like crazy, making art like crazy. And I mean that all in a good way. Like it's been very filling and it may take me a really long time to process everything.
so this right in front that's governor's island that's where i'm having a show on july 23rd and that's where i keep posting pictures from and then there's the statue of liberty here i'll zoom in she's everywhere <laughs> pretty cool <laughs> that's the red bean paste <laughs> <laughs> then we can zoom. On this side you can see Manhattan. And on this side you can see the beach. 